came home and I remember I couldn't really move past the entrance of the house and I need to talk about the fact that this little girl said that I was black and that I in fact found myself to be beige. I was playing doctor with a bunch of kids and, uh, and this one girl, it was her turn to kiss me and she didn't and she sort of ran away laughing and the other kids ran away laughing and the thing I realized at that point that that I was black and they were all white because this was a small private school in Boston. And that was the first time I remember feeling like black was somehow separate from the norm, you know. I think I knew I was black before then because as I say in my show, my mom would not have let me not know I was black. <laughs> there would have been no way that she would have let that information slip. Uh, it's cold outside, take a jacket, and you're black. I was born in Africa, so everybody's black. <laughs> so... We don't really think about it like that. I mean, here he comes like, yeah, I mean, oh, so is he black? Is he white? Is he black? Is he black? black? In Africa, like, you don't ask. The assumption is that you're black. Therefore, what becomes more important is other things. What your name is, where do you come from, what language do you speak, what's your culture, what's your tribe, etc. So I didn't know I was black. When I was eight, I moved to the Middle East. I think the Middle East is the first time I discovered I was black. Because people will come to talk to you and they'll be like, oh, yes, and what does that translate to? That means, oh, this is a black guy. <laughs> Did you say that you were black? Yeah, I'm black. Okay. I grew up in East Chinatown in Toronto, so it was made very clear that I was Guaylo from a very early... Guaylo being... White ghost, sort of, you know, I know every derogatory term for a white person in Chinese. <laughs> 